Hey guys, welcome to, to uh, No Tux Allowed. This is your host, Josh, who is uh, very, very, very busy this week, and uh, ha we're recording this a little bit late here, so you might hear some yawns, but that's not going to be from me. That's going to be from this other guy who's uh, way, w staying up way too late. Hello. And that is, the, yeah, that is that big pod guy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's All pretty right. late. Yeah, uh, big pod. It is a hot and toasty day outside. Uh, as I, yeah. as we sit here, I have turned off my air conditioners, and uh, as soon as I turn them off, the uh, room temperature has has jumped 15 degrees in temperature in the past 10 minutes. <coughs> so no. uh, it is Sorry. getting mildly warm. Yeah, it's Sorry. it's fine. I will survive. It is for the sake of good quality audio. Yeah. Of which we have a big announcement coming about up on that here later. But anyways, uh, Big Pod, there has been some distro news this week. Yeah. And it is for a distro that uh, you probably have heard of, but you've never used. And I know I've yeah. definitely heard of it, but I have never actually used it myself. And that is the world's second greatest Linux distribution called Funtu. <laughs> Uh, obviously, from the name, uh, it, you could uh, tell that this is Gen 2 related. In fact, it is yeah. so Gen 2 related that the cre that the one of the original creators of Gen 2, Daniel Robbins, uh, has created Fun 2. Uh, there's a bit of there's a bit of a backstory to that. Uh, I and uh, there is like this wonderful uh, video on YouTube that Daniel Rob. Uh, where Daniel Robbins actually put out a, put out gave a, a speech explaining what what fun two is and everything, I do recommend uh, that you do give that a watch. If if I can find a link for it, I'll have it in the description for the show for you. But anyways, uh, he posted a blog post here uh, last Friday. It's actually a forum post on the fun two forums where uh, it's time for him to move on to other things. And uh, there is no successor, a no successor for Funtu, nor is he interested in trying to find a new one, or even to just hand the project off to somebody else. So uh, this is as hard a shutdown as you could potentially get without you know just voluntarily forking it yourself and then just figure out yeah. everything by yourself. Yeah. But uh, Big Pod. Do you have opinions on this? Like, is this the proper way to kill a project? Uh, no. I, as someone who is involved in projects of probably this size and bigger, I would say no. You, you have to be much more noticeable. You have to still keep some sort of deprecation policy. So and it's good that you announced this couple of months before, not as far as, as far as I see. At best, a month before it it all stops, all the fun stops. Part of yeah. the fun. Uh, which, if you don't know what what the uh, Fun Two or Gen Two is, they are source based Linux distributions. Fun Two, uh, I believe. Uh, they offer a couple extra binaries, and uh, realistically, all you're all you're managing is just like the use flags, rather than modifying like uh, CPU parameters or compi compiler options. So uh, you're just changing uh, use flags or uh, your uh, build options for pack packages and software. Yeah, the 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 point is gentle but fun. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, of course, it is dependent on what your definition of fun is, and yes. uh, it it, de it also depends on how addicted to uh, compiling software you are. Well, honestly, I kind of like compiling software, but I don't know, and, and Gento never made sense to me. Maybe because I never saw a point in compiling things directly on my machine. I always thought that the best thing there is, is to have a build farm somewhere else, a lot of servers that do the build for you, which is exactly what I, I used to have and still have. A relatively small 
or should we say big for like a single person individual built farm that constantly chews on docker images packages of all kinds and all that that's that's what my kind of compiling fun looks like but for someone like uh, Josh there compiling his fun is on their own machine which I don't get but yeah well uh for some backstory as to why I started using uh, Gen 2 to begin with. Uh, it wasn't because uh, I wanted to actually, I, I wanted to love compiling software. It actually started out from a point of necessity. Uh, simply because uh, I live in cornfields of Ohio. And as a result of living in cornfields of Ohio, my internet connection is not always the greatest. And uh, I have tested uh, satellite connections, point-to-point uh, -point wireless connections, and uh, currently, to even record the show, I'm using a DSL connection. So uh, that is super fast internet provided via phone line. We're talking about the guy who has his own dial-up. That's a separate story. But, <laughs> uh, so, uh... It turns out that on a lot of more modern distributions, uh, they're, they're using the they're using uh, time stamping, uh, granted via HTTPS and all that, you know, network time protocol and all that, and it's got to match hundred hundred percent of the times your machine time has to match the remote server time. Yes. Otherwise, the handshake fails. Yes. Well, Stop on a major, on a lot of distros. If you even lag a quarter of a second, it can cause failures <clears throat> in, in like package downloads, which means that uh, your and a lot of package managers, Arch Linux being one of them, uh, they don't tell you why the download failed. <laughs> yeah, Debian will. Unfor Debian will. Uh, the app will put it out into a log file, and you'll see a TLS connection failure. Okay, yeah. that that's fine. Well, it turns out that when you're downloading, you know, just text files rather than binaries, uh, the downloads are tend to be a lot more reliable when you're using git clone or rsync pull and uh, stuff like that. So uh, when it came to, you know, just installing software over the internet rather than, you know, buying buying the, the uh, Debian DVD, which you could still buy, you could buy the entire Debian package archive on, on a set of DVDs for $20. And uh, you know, installing installing that way, uh, Gen two was actually the one operating system at the time that I could get to reliably install things, and that's how I started using Gen two. I I <laughs> still don't believe that ever was a thing that that CD with all the program or DVD with all the packages. That's just insane to me. <laughs> it's it's a set of DVDs. <laughs> I think uh, last I checked, they were up to like uh, 48, DV di uh, 48 disks. Knowing how big the Debian repository is, how many, how many packages and how big they can be, yeah. I bet it's probably a bit more than 48 now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to check. But uh, of course, it, it'll, they'll also only ship you Debian stable, so. Yeah, uh, uh, and I think that's, uh, let's be honest here, that's, in my opinion, a big big failure of what kind of distribution method they're using. The problem is HTTPS, yeah. in my opinion. I think that that can be handled if you had less tight timings. Problem is that you're, you have to download the whole 500 megabyte package again. Yep. If, you, if they use something a bit more distribution spec you you could have it broken down into many pieces well it was a it was amazing like what like uh, before then, this yes. tornado came like uh, before this tornado came and just wrecked my entire town tearing up all the brand new fiber lines that my ISP ran and everything like a month prior I had I had an amazing Linux experience because you know yeah. I could use any distro and they all just worked <laughs> maybe, maybe you should uh, you should try that that star thingy that satellite. Oh, that Starlink that's not available in my area. Oh, it's not available. 
<laughs> nope. Every time I go to apply for it, uh, it's not available in, my, in your area. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm well, sad uh, for you because people seem to be happy with it. Yep. Uh, and and I know that people are happy with it too, but I I, I also kind of hesitate to give Elon money. <laughs> Just saying. Come on. He's saying. He's been saying a lot of off-the-wall things lately, and just like, ah... But it's SpaceX, it's not really Elon. But I'm not gonna go and litigate that issue, because, well... He's an interesting person, let's just say that. Yeah. But, uh, you know... But back, I, to, and... back to the topic at hand. What do you think about the whole fun to going away? So... I've never really used fun to, so... Uh, and I don't know anything about it. Uh, like huh. I know that I know generally how it's installed, and uh, you can install it using uh, the, the, you install it basically the same way that you install Gen Two, except that you just download a different tarball. and uh, point, making sure that it's pointing to uh, different repositories, which it <coughs> that's fine with me. Uh, and it was, and I know that the. That the fun two community while being much smaller than Gen two, uh, is also like very awesome. Like uh, they'll joke with you and and everything, uh, rather, rather than you know do the Arch Linux thing and tell and scream at you to re read the manual and such. Yep. But uh, I think with the project being as small as small as it is. There comes a point in time where you're just like maintaining something like this and you just don't want to do it anymore. Not because you know it it's bad or bad or anything like uh he was legitimately having fun with fun too last I heard. He he just enjoyed he enjoyed maintaining it. But uh I'm going to guess that like other obligations came up and Yeah. He there's just nobody in the community that he, that he would even look at or maybe he has he has asked uh, other contributors for the project. Who knows? But uh, I think <clears throat> it it's fine for him to uh, uh, reti retire the distribution. Yeah. Uh, maybe you know the numbers. How many? Are we talking in users in thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions? I'm going to say that's at least in the thousands. I okay. don't know. I don't know, like, actually, how many people actually use it. Mostly because that's just not something that uh, you can just find on a public tracker. Yeah. Well, I, I have two projects uh, that I can base how many users are like for my thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, speaking of projects, Big Pod. Apparently, yeah. this notepad that I've been using here to uh, keep track of like everything I need to do is not good enough anymore. I need to step into the digital not. age. Yep. And uh, I asked you what to do app uh, you recommend, and you just told me that they all just suck. Yeah, they do. Well, they suck for me. So <clears throat> I got first time I started using to do apps was a couple of years ago when I was working. And we, we, we started using some public, uh, non-free, non-open uh, non source hosted thing that that you cannot self-host, you cannot have, or, you know. And one of the amazing features it had, and that I cannot replicate almost anywhere. At least I tried to, and there is no easy way to do it, is to have here, here of subtasks, on and on and on and on however long you want so that's one feature I like because I like to break down my my task into really small pieces so I can keep track of whether it be if it's like let's say a big task it's like uh, let's say make an episode for example if we use a podcast as an example then you may have like a subtask of get links you have subtask of uh, record an episode which has other subtasks in it like uh, I don't know how, what let's say, let's say start the recording join the recording first of all <laughs> and things like that and like stop the recording and 
bits and pieces that are in between. And of course you have editing and you can keep all the stages of editing and production in subtasks and so on. That, that kind of flexibility of many subtasks, it's kind of hard to find in a proper task management app as it's like when you go into the professional level would be called not anymore to do lists to do apps but task management app and that's been being a problem for me for a while I, i've tried many things next cloud thing i've tried i've tried using github github github's uh, boards and so on and it that always just that little bit was missing for me and i tried a couple of other and there are some that still have that but all of them are proprietary h hosted only by the, the the third party solutions and that just doesn't work for me honestly okay and i want I know to that have you're... my own I... self-hosted solution but that's mm. okay so uh i know that there is a couple that that do exist and uh i'm sure that the, as a vs code user uh there is a there is an extension for vs code that yes. handles to do's but one of the reasons that you want a hosted solution is so you can share it with friends colleagues family and you can all collaborate on tasks let's say let's say for example again back to the pot podcast example me and josh we would probably wa both want to have access to the same list. Stuff that are local only don't have. You can you have a much harder time doing it. You need to set up uh, Next Cloud or some other other solution that can do instant tr uh, instant transfer of files and synchronization of this stuff between computers, and that just honestly gets into territories of brittleness that are just, in my opinion, questionable if they're good. Okay. Okay, so, uh, I know that you got some skills skills in the writing uh, letters and symbols in appropriate orders to, <laughs> to eventually compile into a program. Yes. Uh, are you going to be, uh, are you going to be going the DIY solution on this? Yes, I, I already am doing it. I'm writing my own and I'm going to open source it when, once it's ready. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, what you're saying is that we as a community need to start coming up with names for this. Um, maybe not. I already have a name for it picked out and I can even talk about it if you want. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So... The current current uh, name is Questline. It's I'm not exactly sure if there is anything like it already out there, so I think have done this. this Questline, this is, okay, okay. So uh, each task is a quest. And, yes. And so uh, you would need a log of these quests. Like that could be the like the uh, task management itself, and so, and see, seeing that you're that it's called quest line, that means that there's a series of quests. So yes. uh, that's where we can get the task management involved. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the name, I guess, the name makes sense. Yeah, it's essentially I came up with the idea uh, when I was thinking about this, and I was actually at the same time thinking about gamification of things. Okay. And okay. On one hand, to do and task manager is already some sort of gamification of actually doing a thing because you know you get a dopamine rush of actually checking off an item and all that. It's like like when you're doing uh, if you're playing an MMORPG or something like that, where you have quests when you finish one of those one of those objectives, you're quite proud of yourself, especially if it's oh. a long quest. Or like when you finish one quest in a quest line you actually feel a lot you feel a bit of a dopamine rush and that's the, so what is I there gonna evoke. be like an experience bar and everything with the ding sound yes <laughs> i don't know about the sound but there will be an experience bar 
And All right. Are, and plan is that you would be able to, if you had multiple team members or colleagues or friends, family, you could actually go and have like competitions of who has most XP. Okay, okay, so I can see this now. Uh, you can have tasks with breakdowns into sub subtasks as well. Yes. And potentially even subtasks on the subtasks. Yeah. That you can, and uh, every level is a completed subtask or task. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. It's a bit of XP depending on how com how complex it is and how how complex to say it is, essentially, and. One of, the, one of the things I really want to do is I want to do, I, I call them dailies, weeklies, monthlies. So essentially, if you ever played something like World of Warcraft, you remember that certain quests you can do every day. Those are, those are referred to as dailies. I mean, one daily quest that comes out to me from World of Warcraft is that one in uh, Storm Peaks where you have to go punch a dragon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And yes, uh, that kind of quest, so for, for ex great example of uh, daily quest is a morning routine. We all do yep. it, whether we, whether we think about it or not. And th there are some people who are, who are that kind of a person who wants to have, who wants to check off an item of a list for every morning that they did it. Whether they do it manually or on an app or in their head, it doesn't matter. They, they actually, we actually follow a certain list of things to do. Or it could be like work. I have to be at work and so on. Or a weekly quest is the recording of this episode or this podcast. Or did Josh remember to hit the publish button? Because, you know, I sure that, as hell did last that, that, week. That's a giant <laughs> quest. That's a giant quest for us. That could, that could be a legendary quest. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> and on top of that, because, well, Task need, some task needs to have limitations of time. You could assign you could assign it some finish date and even set a notification, which is and he may he he is the reason I decided to do that feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so uh, you said games and you said application. So I would like to request Steam Deck support. Is yeah, it, that's the way. That's what. That's what. That's how we have to phrase Linux support. Like, we can't say Linux. We have to say Steam Deck, well, right? Uh, it will start as a web app, so everything okay. support. But then, okay, and then so I'll be able to get this as like a web app that I can then put at, install into my system as a PWA yeah, and PWA. my phone as a PWA. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And hopefully, if I do things right, I should be able to generate a phone app at least for Android. Without much of a problem. Well, most most phone apps for Android are really just website wrappers. Yeah, but uh, I mean, like a proper native app that is that is uh, generated from said uh, HTML code. Okay. Yeah, uh, every t and for all of you who might think about helping out, it's written in C sharp, so uh, most of you will just go, huh. Oh. But if you're gonna have good UI experiences, you will write in JavaScript. Yeah, you will. You will all be welcome because I am not a UI designer. Well, most most uh, software developers are not. That's yes. that's why uh, they, that's why UX design is a job title. And that's and I'm also <laughs> not good front end engineer. Yep. Yep. I'm a, I'm a back end engineer by heart and by soul. Well, so, I guarantee you that if you that if you ship me access to an early build of it, I will share opinions with you. <laughs> You're like, this yes. button shouldn't be here, or this button should be over yes. here. Yes, uh, we all know what kind of uh, y user experience I make. <laughs> the production studio for our podcast. Giant hey, buttons it's, and a single. It's got clock. giant buttons and a timer on it. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect for what you do. Yeah, you know, it's just like a so uh, for some context here, like when we take breaks in the show or anything like that, I'll mention the timestamp that I have on my OBS uh, studio here, and and he's just got a little button that he just presses. 
to uh, just uh, mark mark that in the in the video file that he, he then pulls up for 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 the editor. It's it a, makes job much easier because you know at least an approximate time when when the pause started. Yep. Which, uh, you know, this sounds really cool and everything, and it it might be useful for a project that I'm thinking of coming up next year. I uh, people have been asking me, well, specifically like two people have been constantly asking me how long it's going to take for me to make Josh OS, Ooh. and uh, big big pod. It might be time because you know I'm, I, th- I'm I'm starting to get really opinionated about distributions. <laughs> like really, really opinionated. It's it's like it's that thing that Gen two does to you, you know. Yeah. Or you know, this this package is missing this feature. Uh, by the way, I'm recording this from Arch Linux by the uh, currently, so uh, I just needed to get that out of there because you know. By the way, I use Arch, and uh, I've already had to recomp- I've already had to uh, pull down the Git build of the Ar- of the OBS Studio package to fix that <clears> because <throat> not even the Titan six five two pack package uh, I- implements AV one support properly. So I had to build that myself. <laughs> uh, maybe you need a build server infrastructure now. Uh, it's in the closet. <laughs> but uh, I think it's time for me to uh, delve into the w- wonderful world of forking a distro and making my own spin of it. Uh, because, you know, uh, Big Pod, that's what you've done. Uh, so, and uh, you still do a little bit to this day. And I think that uh, these Fedora Atomic spins sound super appealing for this, because uh, I kind of know how to make one now. As uh, some of you might might uh, know, if you've looked at like my GitHub page, I have a project literally called HTPC. That is for my home theater computer, and it, and it is a Fedora Atomic image uh, for home theater PC. All it, all it is is just minimum viable. Here's Cody. Him. And it, 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 does it a great came job. out of a most horrible video recording ever. Uh, <laughs> it is so horrible that uh, you can see big part of me typing or talking about what I'm typing on the screen, which you can't see the screen. So uh, it was an amazing the, recording session. It, it was an amazing recording session because you know we we fixed a lot of troubles too. We even had to pause the recording at one point for like two hours to fix something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it was but, one sitting. Yeah, uh, we're not going. I'm I'm not going to publish that <laughs> because you know, uh, good. It's not very. Is well, it could be insightful and entertaining. Uh, even uh, and entertaining. Even Iron Pipe, the guy that who who I tasked with like seeing if he can salvage something out of this, said that this just isn't good. Just is not. <laughs> like, I okay. think I think that video could. If you cut it up properly, it could be titled uh, in the same vein as the uh, computer guy yells at printer to print type video. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which, which ironically, know, if I if I if I remembered once, I could actually print <laughs> or make. I, I was <laughs> yelling at a printer because I didn't want to print, and I was yelling for an hour. And after after I stopped yelling. And everything worked. I remembered why didn't I record this? <laughs> well, <laughs> that would be remember, gold on YouTube. <laughs> uh, just remember, uh, Richard Stallman started the GNU project simply because he was upset at a printer. <laughs> yeah, uh, he didn't solve that problem. <laughs> Let's be he honest. did not solve that problem at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone can. <laughs> yeah. So uh, th- this distro. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be building it off of Fedora, uh, which I know some some people love Fedora, some people hate Fedora, and I and I'm going to be building off the Atomic Desktop uh, simply because you know, uh, I just I just like the idea behind an at- the Atomic Desktop, and you know, if I'm going to be deploying something for somebody, I want to make sure that what I what I make and deploy to them is what I'm currently actively using at home. So, and I want to have that perfect one to one match. So, will you be using a blue image or an or in Fedora image, I'm probably so. I'm probably going to be using a Ublue image because I, I know where to get the Ublue image from. I don't know where yeah. to get the where to get the Fedora image from, uh, like the Fedora base image. I'm talking about like the yeah. s- the minimum viable. Here's just enough distro to boot. Image. Yeah. 
that's fun stuff. Yeah, and because that's where I want to start at. Because mm-hmm. uh, if I start from anything fancier from Ublu, uh, there's so it's not that I hate the Ublu team, but I don't go want to, to have to. Go do, to the I don't, me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to remove. I don't want to have to remove Brew. I, yeah. I don't see why Brew exists. I don't see why it's there. Uh, the you just for tool, CLI apps that you do not want to install via uh, RPM OS three. But Flatpak exists. Toolbox exists. Flatpak plus CLI. That's one of the most horrible experiences on the planet of uh, planets. That's like Toolbox oh, exists. Yes, but people don't like to do containers if they don't have to, like that kind of deep dive into containers. It's actually, actually, in my opinion, it should all be just, just a container. But people were like, "Nah, containers." That's the, that's the that... that's the how to say uh, that's a condensed version of, of couple of months of history of how Brook came to be. At one uh, point, it was a container as well. Okay. Okay. It, so it, uh, it is a fun, fun experience when you're there. Yeah. Anyways, uh, there, there's a lot of just stuff that I just don't want to have to uh, deal with removing. Yeah. And uh, and so I just want to be starting from minimum viable. And uh, I know that you, the Ublu base image that I've been using for like the HTPC project, seems minimal enough. So uh, I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna use that same, same image that I'm basing off of. So. It Obviously, is, I, from what I remember, because I think I looked at the upstream version of it, which is basically ba- you blue most basic you blue base image is basically that. It's the most basic basic crap you can. I think Fedora server uh, version is more more <laughs> more complete than that, which I'm fine with. <laughs> Because uh, e- even though it might ship with like Network Manager, which I think it's using Network Manager, and yeah. it has Nano installed by default, yeah. Boohoo, Ooh. which I don't, I have no issues with ne- Network Manager. Uh, yeah. If in fact I, on a desktop, I prefer Network Manager t- compared to like anything else. At on the server, though, I might have opinions, but a lot on of the people desktop, would say, it's perfectly fine. A lot of people would say at least not Netplan, but honestly, either works. I don't know why why people have so many problems with Netplan. That's the canonical yeah. thing. YAML files. That's their problem. Uh, as you probably noticed during the, sh- during the whole series of episodes of this podcast, I love YAML files. I count myself as a YAML programmer. I don't, I don't have a hatred of YAML files. It's just that every now and then I'll put like a bit of white space in the wrong spot in a YAML file. Yeah, and then I have to find it, and that's where I, that's when I remind myself that maybe YAML is just another markup language. <laughs> yes, it is, it, is, it is yet another markup language, after all. But, but yeah, uh, if you have a good good IDE, that doesn't happen. I just need to work on the Emacs configuration for like another that's, three days. And you I'll know, have it working. I mean. A good ID, not Emacs. I think oh. Nano has better support for YAML. <laughs> well, I know that Vim has pretty good YAML support, so yeah. maybe I'll just use Vim. Maybe maybe I will finally join the, the cult of Vim and figure out how to uh, translate all of my uh, Emacs org documents to to uh, to the Vim wiki script, <laughs> which uh, I don't even take it direct. I can directly export to. I know I can export to Markdown, and I know Vim Wiki can handle Markdowns. So maybe I can do that. Interesting. Maybe. All all I know is that there's one massive org document for, that I use specifically for my Dungeons and Dragons campaigns that has a lot of custom functions designed specifically for it. So it probably will not be able to translate whatsoever. And the uh, for the record, that is a 15 gigabit text file. It Gigabyte. is massive. Yes. Gigabyte text file. Uh, I mean, as in pure there, text. Uh, there, there are some images involved. Okay, but it's mostly text. Wow. Yes. Uh, this is how old a, is it? Uh, it's at least twenty years old. Okay. 
because that's how long I've been playing the game. And uh, I started this when I started playing the game. <laughs> turn it into multiple <laughs> files. Make it a make it a website. <laughs> that would be my recommendation. Well, you see, I can export this to a website. Yeah. Through Emacs. But make it multiple websites, man. What? You don't want just one giant web page? No. That, that, that's gonna be that's gonna be scrolling for years. Well, I can get super fancy with it and uh, and uh, use a read the org template, which uh, you know if you if you've ever seen a read the docs website, it, it's yeah. basically just like the same thing but for Emacs. Yeah. <laughs> and I can export that, and I can export it into uh, that kind that style of website. So maybe maybe it could be well. well but at the end of the day, on my hand. Uh, if you open some big projects on GitHub, you have days of README file because they <laughs> stick the whole documentation in it and just go of down course. and down and down and down. Even though, they don't even discover... though GitHub has a giant wiki sec section. Yeah, uh, let it. I've never figured out how to actually set up the wiki on the GitHub. I probably, should. I, I probably should. I think I think it's a separate Git repository you have to set up with it. I think it does it for you in the background. Automatically. At least that's how it works on GitLab. I'll have to look into that. Because you know, uh this HTPC thing I kinda wanna have some documentation for it too. I but I would I know because I manage a GitLab or managed let's correct myself. A GitLab instance, and I've exported the data not too long ago. And each repo had two repos: a Git repo and a Wiki repo, which both of them are Git repos. But one of them is for the code, and another one is for the Wiki. I mean, it would make sense for it to just be another Git repo. Yeah. Which uh, I'll I'll have to dig into that because uh, if I'm going to be releasing like my own desktop image. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have to deal with my opinionated, which uh, I use a window manager, so it would be great, great to have like a resource to figure out like the keybinds that I'm using, even though uh, yeah. they're pretty simplistic. Uh, don't be like that that one guy who has like three window managers in it, or four. How many? How many are in there? That's, that's yeah, and then has to have like a has to have like a specialized conky script uh, that yes. explains all the key bindings. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's that. really simple. You see, you just sit here, you just hit super E, super e, super E, then F F F three six two five, and watch out for to not press super Q because that's gonna quit the whole thing. Yep, never hit super Q because that that's just that just hard kills the window manager. Yep. Well, which is not the proper way to log out a user. Yeah. <laughs> well, at, at least it's not Alt F four. That's the, true. That's the most true. amazing message you could get in a game. And a lot of people fall for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean including me. I for me to for close a window once. it's uh super shift C. And I have this not in, in, in the upper right corner this nice button. It's red and has an X in it. And I just press it. And the window just closes. Oh, I, I disable window borders, so I don't have an X button on most applications. And if if I if I really need to close it hard, I go to the taskbar, in and right click it, and press this button that says end task, and just disappears like magic, like it was never there. You oh, know, that's what Super E is for. That's what that's what the Super Escape is for. Uh, that that's for skill. Yeah. I just do it with my mouse and not with my keyboard. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, Big Pod. Yeah. Just to let you know, uh, my wallet is running slightly drier than usual. Yeah. So, uh, I've decided that, uh, because nobody has given us any kind of, uh, suggestions on how we should monetize, at least not through the emails, which, uh, makes me a little sad. I've decided... Or we might just not be receiving them. That's also an option. That's also very potentially true. Somebody send us an email so we can find out. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I've decided that we're that the, to 
create a Patreon page because Patreon is still the popular thing. Yeah. And uh, the, if you go to patreon.com slash no tucks allowed, yes, we actually got the full page. Uh, you can you can sign up for us. So, and uh, there are a few tiers listed on there, mostly because, you know, the base $5 tier is fine, but the Patreon really encourages you to spin up like other tiers for some reason, even though I'm perfectly fine with $5 a month. But uh, I, we made a couple tiers. We made a five dollar tier, which is you know just a base supporter. Uh, a ten dollar tier, which is the base supporter plus f- plus warm fuzzy feeling. And then uh, you'll see that there's a twenty dollar tier as well, because uh, you know Big Pot and I live in very per- di- per- different parts of the world, and I think I need a vacation. And Big Pod probably needs a vacation too. He he seems to be working way too hard. So uh, I, at the twenty dollars tier, it's called Give Josh the Euro Trip that he's always kind of wanted to uh, take, because you know uh, I've never been outside of my country because you know there's not much reason to go outside of the United States when you live here, not unless like you have a big friend that's inviting you out to Europe all the time. Which uh, <laughs> I know that Big Pod's not necessarily the one inviting me out to Europe all the time, but there are there are people that invite me out to Europe all the time. So if I'm gonna go to Europe. I'm going to be there for a month. <laughs> I just know that already. <laughs> Get my money's worth out of it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Big Pod needs to come to America because I need to show him what real American food is and, you know, and have him drink American Coca-Cola because it is very different from European Coca-Cola. Yeah. yeah. Everything is a lot healthier here. Yeah, uh, we we like our sugar. All right, uh, exactly. <laughs> not just sugar. Example, like uh, like a fast food. Like when you buy like a burger with sa- that has salad in. The difference between U.S. and Europe is that when you open the package in Europe, the salad will jump at you. It does a surprise because the box is absolutely filled to the brim with salad. Even around the salad is the side dish as well as the the dish in the in the burger, together with the rest of the ingredients. So a lot of salad. That is a lot of salad. Yes. It might be too much salad. <laughs> when I buy yes. a burger, I want a burger. I don't want a yeah. salad. Yeah. Also, the portions are a lot smaller. I wanna I wanna experience American portions. Well, this is what you do. You you go figure out like a uh, what what a quarter pound is in uh, your kilograms, and you grab a you grab grab some ground beef, and you make yourself a patty that big. Yeah, you, it's got to be at least <laughs> half an inch thick. At yeah. least. Because you know it's going to shrink when you cook it anyway. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, uh, if you want to find us, that just go to the Patreon. Uh, there is a premium feed that we are that we are going to be start start uh, starting to create, and when you when you sign up on the Patreon, uh, we're going to uh, come. We're going to I think uh, we're, we're going to be hosting the feed through the same Castapod instance that we're using right now to host yep. the show. And we're probably I we're still trying to figure out how that works. I think uh, I think uh, when uh, we go go to uh, do the premium feed thing, it creates an access token. That uh, we would have to send you. Yes, I believe if I if I figure it out correctly, at this time it's non-automatic. But I think with a bit of magic, I can get it to be automatic. Just just need to crack these fingers into creating an an app to do it, like yeah, a it, server it, application with with timers. Yeah, uh, it'll it'll take us a. Uh, It'll it'll take us a little bit to figure that that part out. It's not going to be like an instant thing. Which, but uh, until then, a manual manual thing will work. Yep, we can just manually generate that for you. Yeah, and you will get your own token, and you will have access to your own to your own personal customized feed that will that will be personally customized for you and everybody else who who pays for the premium feed. <laughs> of course, and of course. Obviously, if you don't like the idea of what, of how we're monetizing, shoot us an email to this email that's on screen right now if you're watching the video, or just go to contact at tuckspace.com. 
and send us the angriest email that you possibly can with the subject line of this is an angry email with the full text the very first line obviously has to say this is in fact an angry email and I'm disappointed in you Yeah. and then proceed to tell us how we should monetize instead because you know it turns out that when you're self hosting your own podcast it is cheap yes but it is not free yeah and can get expensive re- really fast really quick yeah uh, especially we if you want to do it right yet. yeah uh, we we haven't blown up yet, but you know if we do if we ever do blow up yet, we're currently on the free tier for the transfer. But I know that uh, our hosting company uh, can really bill you when when uh, yep. you hit your transfer limit. So uh, we might want to build up the war chest while we still can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of and... course, uh, it. If you want to contact us directly or contact uh, Josh directly because, well, I still don't have my Mastodon instance up, we might be fixing it by the time this episode airs, or there might be an, a completely new instance by a completely new name by a completely different uh, group that I join. Pro- probably same same administrator <laughs> and maintainer. <laughs> It just might, might not be Big Pod. It just might be tax base as an organization. But yeah, tax base proper. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. We're going to see. Let's surprise ourselves. Which means I will be surprised by the time as well. But anyways, guys, uh, that's going to be it for the show. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, you enjoyed the topics, topics of conversation because, you know, we kind of came to this without uh, discussing what we were going to be talking about today and then we kind of just came yes. up with it as we were we were chatting yeah and uh i'm going to uh go turn my air conditioner back on now i'll see you guys next week goodbye <laughs>